Hey skiers, I'm Jeff from SkiEssentials.com. And I'm Bob. How's it going? Uh, welcome to another Ski Essentials bargain basement video. And this is exciting, at least for me, because we haven't done one of these since May. Right. So we did two last year. We did one on, I think you said March 9th? Yeah, and that one's going to have some parallels to this in terms of yep. the timing. Yep, exactly. So we'll do that. We'll consider this kind of our mid-winter bargain basement video, and then we will almost definitely do a spring bargain basement video. Um, and that is because prices will drop again at, at some point. Um, I can't remember exactly when. And you thought it might be good to touch on this. Um, <clears throat> we don't like use this term public facing very often, but I do think you see it sometimes, uh, MAP drops or MAP drops. Um, and basically, the price of these skis is, is controlled by the manufacturer. Yeah. So as a dealer of really all of the brands that we, <clears throat> excuse me, that we carry, we basically make an agreement that we won't break their MAP guidelines. And yeah. MAP stands for Minimum Advertised Price. Right. So basically the manufacturers kind of set when and how much you can discount their skis. Uh, and then we just kind of follow along. And that's basically to prevent like, like a race to the bottom yeah. of just undercutting opponents and then also just with shops. So yep. online you don't want to just totally submarine shops. So we're kind of beholden by the same rules, just to make an even even playing field for, totally for all the retailers. You know, yep. the, the manufacturers can't favor one dealer over another, really. Yes, even playing field. Yes, does that make sense? <laughs> I think so. That makes sense. Um, so, anyways, this was really fun, as they always are. Uh, we have fully adopted our draft style for all of these bargain basement videos. I don't expect you'll see us do another one that's not draft style because it's super fun. Yep. And I think the result is actually better than when we just like pick a bunch of skis. Yeah. Um, and then just another thing too, like these are all 2024 Correct. model skis. So in the past we've, all, we've gone back to uh, some older years, stuff that we really have clung on to for a while. Yeah, there's not much of that there's this year. There's not much of that this year. Yep. But, you know, there still are, like, better deals on our site. I think we were looking at, like, an Armada Reliance 102 from two yeah. years ago that was just super cheap, but only one size. Yeah, someone go buy a Reliance 102 Ti in a yeah. 172 that's paired with an Attack 14 because, like, that price might be wrong. Yeah. It's so low. <laughs> <clears throat> like, we are, we are losing money, but it's a really good ski. Yeah. And, like, I don't know. Why wouldn't a small man get a 172 Reliance 102 Ti and just have a ripping free yeah. ride ski? So, good point. Yeah. You will. And all of these, we have quantity and sizes. You know, that was another kind of that is calculation a, a, that we took in. A stipulation yeah. is that we at least need to have close to a full size run for for it to be eligible for Bob or myself to pick it. Yep. I think that covers about everything. Yeah, the methodology of bargain yep. basement. Yep. Uh, we flipped a coin for first pick. I lost. It was devastating. Go ahead. QST 106 was my first choice and uh, kind of by a long shot, I would say, uh, just in terms of why I like the ski and you're get, what you're getting for the price. So this is unchanged. Uh, that's another kind of Not changing for 2025? Not changing for 2025 except for graphics. I didn't use that as a requirement. Oh, well. Your third ski changes. Well, yeah, I mean, <laughs> that's why I took it. Because <laughs> you can never get it again. Fair enough. So that's another thing I was taking into account. But, you know, it's been... Uh, almost, what's it been, two years on this current. Uh, we just get a graphic change for 2025. Uh, and just one of the more stable and fun skis out there at in that mid-100s range. 
Uh, we have it online now for $599.96, so just under $600, originally just under $750. Uh, so like even at that deal, it's you know one of the less expensive top end skis out there. Uh, but now for under six hundred dollars, I think you're getting a ton of performance uh, and a bunch of versatility. We skied this last week with Solomon, yep. and I was reminded once again, like this is a great carving ski as well as having all of those soft snow uh, temperaments to it as well. So yeah. the range of this thing really puts it over the edge for me. Uh, and then just to just to reiterate, I think this is probably one of the sharpest looking skis on the wall, front and back. So for the money, you're getting performance, value, and a really good looking ski, and it's really tough to argue with it. Yeah, and I think like like you said, slightly inaccurately, it is important to note that that one doesn't change for next year. Yeah. So you're getting current or future performance. Right. And that was something that I emphasized a lot in the kind of written written article to go along with this is like, I, th I do think that's really cool. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I lost the, the coin flip for first pick, um, but it's all right. I still think I win. Um, your logic is sound with your first pick. Yeah. Can people vote? Let's have people leave a comment who, yeah. who won, who won the draft. Um, I did get inspired by your first pick because five hundred and ninety nine dollars and ninety six cents is not like inexpensive. Right. So I thought I would go a completely different route with this Vocal Revolt ninety six. Uh, this is three hundred and fifty nine dollars and ninety nine cents. I mean that's a that's awesome. Even at your retail four forty nine. Yeah, four fifty. It's still yeah. a great deal. Um, I had a blast testing this ski last year. Super fun. It is the replacement for the Revolt 95, which we had unchanged aside from top sheet graphics for like five years. So that's a big reason why I picked this one is I would venture a guess that this ski won't physically change for like four years. Yeah. Half a decade. I think that's a pretty safe guess. Yep. It'll definitely get graphics changes year over year, but the ski itself won't change. And I think <clears throat> I think Vocal did a really, really good job kind of bringing the Revolt 95, now the 96, <clears throat> excuse me, into like a more modern spot. And by they basically did that by tweaking the shape of it. So there's more rocker, there's more early taper, and it's just a really, really fun ski. Um, I draw a lot of similarities to the poacher that you have over there. They're both like pretty hefty twin tips. Um, I do think the Revolt 96 is more of a park ski than a versatile all mountain twin tip. So while I did pick it first because I think it's tremendous value, it's not the type of ski that's really for everyone. It does have a recommended center mount point um, and we have played around with changing the mount point a little bit. I would say if you're if you're considering this ski maybe you ski a little bit of park but not like a lot of park or this isn't just going to be a dedicated park ski. No reason why you can't push that back two or three centimeters and get a little bit more all mountain performance out of this thing. Yeah but, that's what I did and it worked worked great. Yeah. Yeah. So Revolt 96 from Vocal, brand new ski for 2024. I guarantee it'll come back for at least a few more years without any significant changes. So might as well get one at a discounted price. Yeah, and I think you nailed it with the, with the value on that. Yeah. Thank you. I was surprised you didn't take this one, though, Jeff. I got to admit, I was all over it after that 106 went off the board and you didn't take the Unleashed 98 seconds first, I was, I was all over it. It's totally fine. Um, I, got, I got this guy. Yeah. I almost took that just so you wouldn't get it too. <laughs> that would have been really <laughs> sad if I didn't have either of those skews. Uh, if you missed it, we did an on snow review on this last week. So, um, you know, pretty recent. Uh, footage of Jeff skiing on this ski uh, here at Stowe and makes perfect sense why he likes it. 
uh, but also there's a lot to like overall. Everyone that has gotten on the ski that we've talked to has been like, wow, like yeah. amazing energy. It's a great point. Supreme dampness, like just something new and interesting out there uh, in this, you know, 98 millimeter twin tip. Like, did you ever think a twin tip would perform this well in a carve turn? I once skied for Stokely and I had a, uh, a, uh, Gosh, what was that ski called? Like the rotor. The Stokely Rotor yeah. 84 that was a twin tip with phenol sidewalls and two sheets yep. of metal. So, yes, but, <laughs> but it's a rare, was only yeah, one. It's yeah. a rare combination. Yes. Um, this is another version of a ski that whose technology will not change moving into 2025. It does get a new top sheet graphic, which I think looks pretty cool. Yeah, a little, a little more, more color. pastel yep. and colorful. Yep. Um, this one uh, retailed at $699.99. We are dropping to $559.99. So uh, $40 cheaper than a QST 106. Uh, and just a different type of ski. Uh, has that metal, that partial metal laminate that we see in Santa Ana. Uh, and then a little bit different of a camber profile than we see in Santa Ana and Enforcer. So longer camber that's leading to a longer effective edge and that's what gives it its really smooth feel. But then you just add in this twin tip, like it just has more splay in the tail than these other Nordica's uh, tip as well. But I think the tail is kind of the bigger story, allowing for the switch skiing, allowing yeah. for that park capability. <clears throat> uh, and then for someone like me who spends a lot of time in the woods, just really useful and versatile in that, in that realm. So. Uh, just a really interesting blend of attributes in this Unleashed 98. Um, we loved it when we first got on it, and those feelings have not changed. And now that you're getting it at a good price, I think that this makes it just uh, an absolute steal for your, you know, your performance, your, your application, your all-mountain application, and just overall versatility. It's pretty, pretty remarkable. Yeah, put a pretty fancy binding on there, and you're still say under $800, yep. which is a really nice place to be. Um, my turn again? Yeah. I, I love my first two picks. I love all my picks, but these first two are great. So next up, I have the Bent 90 from Atomic. Uh, this one is down to $439.96. It was originally $549.95, so a little bit more than that revolt. Um, but I do think that this opens up the potential skiing audience significantly over Revolt, where that ski is definitely best in the park, or at least with a park mindset. Bent 90 can be skied by... It's hard to think of somebody who couldn't ski it and have a really good time. In fact, I think I said in the written, written Bargain Basement article that... If you can ski a bent 90 and not have fun, I would like to talk to you. And find out what's wrong with you. <laughs> Just find out <laughs> like what happened, like yeah. what wasn't fun. Like right. sure, maybe it doesn't like carve super well at like 50 miles an hour, yeah. but like go have fun on the side of the trail or something sure. like that. So this is the bent 90. Um, this one's a little bit interesting. The bent 100 and the bent Chetler 120, we have talked about both of those skis so far. They both changed for 2025. Now, being uh, pretty experienced in this whole ski industry thing that we've got going here, one could venture a guess that this will change too. It does not change for next year, uh, and we don't know for sure whether it's gonna change for the following year, but you are still getting a current Bent 90 in this ski because it doesn't change for next year yeah so to me that is like the the idea that there may be a new one in two years is not enough reason to not consider this ski yeah i think it's awesome yeah so it is a little lighter than what we saw in revolt 96 over there um i like really extensively tested this ski like two seasons ago was when i really spent a lot of time on it just had a blast skiing park on it. And then I find it like really, really wiggly in moguls and trees. Like I, we've talked about this plenty of times before, but it might be the best mogul ski at 90 underfoot. So if you're just a strictly directional skier, 
and you want a good mogul ski, definitely, definitely, definitely consider the Bent 90. And there is a massive range of mount points on it. So on that Revolt, there's just one line at center. And then it's kind of up to you to decide whether you can deviate from that mm -hmm. mark. This Atomic gives you 10 centimeters of range of mount point. So I would venture a guess that most directional skiers are going to prefer it right on factory recommended. I have Talk to people that go all the way to minus four. I, it, it pains me to think about <laughs> that because I mounted at plus six. Yeah. Um, but it can be so many different, so many different things for so many different skiers. It's even like light enough that you could slap a touring binding on here and have it be like a kind of slight use touring ski. Twin tips don't have the best skin attachment, but they work. That one's not bad. At least it's a little flat. Yeah, I've toured on plenty of twin tips in my life. Yeah. Um, but again, I just couldn't ignore the $539.96 price. I mean, that thing's a cheat code for New England bottom totally. tree skiing. Totally. Like, it just makes it so easy. Incredibly easy. Yeah. yeah. No, I like that one. Uh, I went a little bit beefier with this Brahma 88. And this is one of those skis that is not coming back next year. Um, Brahma, 82, 88, and Bonafide and even Cochise are axed. axed, replaced with Anomaly. So if you want one of those, a Brahma, 82, 88, uh, Bonafide, 97. I was skiing with a friend today whose edge finally ripped out of his old Bonafide, 90. 98. I think he had the old 98. I've been skiing on that thing for a decade. Yeah, for a while. And I'm like, well, if you want another one, this is this is it. Yeah, this you is the last, last chance. Um, but Brahma 88, this thing retails 699.99, discounted to 559.99, so same as Unleashed. And what you're getting for that is uh, likely the most power and stability you're going to get at an 88 millimeter underfoot ski. You can certainly argue with me with your next pick if you want. Uh, as to which one... Did you say power and stability? Yeah. No, I won't argue Okay. With you. Um, and I wouldn't either. I think that that's, that's why I took this over Kendo 88. Well, hey, I'll, I'll wait for my turn. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> because that's what I want. Sure. <laughs> um, you know, this thing's incredibly rewarding in a carved turn on a groomer. It does take a little bit more work to get it to activate in an off-trail situation. And so it ends up being... Uh, kind of a wider front side ski, um, <clears throat> you know, kind of what we talked about, something like a Kessley MX-88, where, yep. like, yeah, it's 88, it should be in an all-mountain range, but my goodness, does it carve too well on groomers, and it's just a little bit on the hefty and dense side to be mobile and agile uh, when the snow gets rough or anything like that. Certainly prefers to motor through rather than kind of stay on top and maneuver around. But when you're locked into a carved turn on this ski with two and a half sheets of metal in it, it is unbelievably damp and stable. So get it now while you can. Uh, Anomaly 88 is no slouch. I mean, we skied on, yeah. on that last week, Good point. Uh, two weeks ago, I should say. And I've put in some time personally on it. And other than that top end, that top, I don't know what percent, 4%, 5% sure. of yeah. top end ceiling performance, uh, you know, there's just, there's more versatility. So those things that I said uh, about this Brahma that were a little bit negative, those don't exist with Anomaly. Yep. Really what you're just missing out on is that top end locked in carve speed. Um, but that's about it. You know, it's really just that difference. Um, but there's certainly that Brahma skier out there that is going to miss this, this build, um, but very few. So I think that Anomaly is going to be great. Um, a lot of people are going to like it and really like the versatility, but if you want that raw power, that raw horsepower, uh, Brahma 88 has always been top of the class. Um, I, I, this is going to sound silly, but you can race on it. Yeah, you can. So if, like, if you are a participant in like a recreational race league, don't overlook the Brahma. Yeah. And I know that people are rolling their eyes at me right now, but Allie's husband, Ryan, who 
if you watch our content, you've seen him in plenty of our content. The guy absolutely rips. He races on a Brahma 88. Luke, who's right through that wall behind the camera, he races on a Brahma 88. Both of those guys are like consistently top five yeah. in our race league, and there are some some heavy hitting skiers in our race league that are on like true race FIS skis. world. Yeah, yes, FIS race skis. Yeah, Ryan won last week. Yeah, and he was on his Brahma. Yeah, and there were tons of people with like body armor on race skis, <laughs> and Ryan just blew past him on yeah. a Brahma 88. Yeah, so. Good potential. Yeah, totally. Uh, my next pick, very similar. It's really interesting how our third picks were both kind of really important skis in the 88 to 90 millimeter all mountain category. This is the Kendo 88, um, 559.99 down from 699.99. So the exact same price as that Brahma 88 that you just talked about. You mentioned that that ski kind of takes it for power and stability. I would say that this ski takes it for precision and responsiveness. So certainly not far behind the Brahma in overall stability. The Kendo is an awesome ski. Um, but I do think that like just the technology that Vocal puts into their skis, it comes along with a different feel. And if you're really if you're really driven by like precision skiing, um, not necessarily like a PSIA style skier or like ski instructor style, but kind of that like yeah. mentality of skiing is you're really paying attention to your weighting and how the ski can react to different things and how you can manipulate the ski to make it do what you want it to do. I think the Kendo is awesome for that type of skier. Um, this one is also interesting because technically this ski doesn't change for next year, but the name goes away. So I don't think we've talked about that yet, but the name Kendo is gone. Basically, everything is Mantra next year for vocals. So Mantra 88 will replace Kendo. The ski itself is going to be the same, but I don't know. I like I have some Kendo nostalgia. It's going to it's going to take a minute, I think, for the industry to call it a Mantra 88. But totally. It's like if your friend changes their name, you know, it's like Oh, I gotta call you Bill from now on. Me, you know. Yeah, yeah. it's just That'd you know, it's, weird. it's it's just that. Um, but yeah, I think that it's it it still has its place for sure. Yeah. So we don't know when it'll change. Um, I'm sure it'll change at some point. But if you're buying a 2024 Kendo 88, you're getting current performance compared to a 2025. Mantra 88, exact same build, exact same technology, just a different name and a different top sheet graphic. Yep. So I love skiing this thing. It's super fun. 3D turn radius is awesome. Like they really do a good job. I think like if you've got a local ski shop near you, just go like look at a Kendo or vocals in general. Like they just do some, some kind of like barely noticeable things to manufacturing and maybe particularly finish quality that does not come across on camera yeah. I guarantee like the way that it kind of like rises right here basically to like achieve the right angles yeah. is is very very cool and it's all done with like from a specific engineering perspective so fantastic skis yeah and it leads to full confidence on the snow totally. i mean there's not many skis that you can just stand on the edge with full confidence that it's going to hold yep. and deliver amazing power and responsiveness in that Agreed. energy on the back end. Agree 100%. It's amazing. Yep. Uh, next up, I kind of went a little bit different. Back to the lighter side of the spectrum with this Ripstick 96. Uh, these change. We did a preview video on the 2025 Ripstick 96 and the 96 Black Edition. Um, basically, you know, changing the ski to make it a little bit more useful over a, a broader range. So we always found that this ski operated really well on higher edge angles or really flat, but if you got caught in the middle, then it didn't act, act as nicely. So the newer ones kind of make it a little bit more subtle and sophisticated. But that doesn't all of a sudden mean that this Ripstick 96 is a bad ski. No, it's And I feel not. like those, like that's kind of a, a conception that we try to 
talk against, you know, when these new models come out. It's like all of a sudden, this isn't a bad ski because no. a new version comes out. Yeah, and, and I would say if we ever, if there was ever such an improvement that we did think the previous <laughs> one was bad, I, we would say so. Yeah. It's just like, this is wildly yeah. different. Like, I don't know why anybody would buy the old one, but that is 100% never, never the case. Right. Um, pricing wise, this thing started at $749.99. We're down to $562.49. So like $750, you know, that puts it pretty close to uh, QST. And like you were talking about with the vocal, there's a lot of technology going on in here. And so that's kind of what, what's bringing that original price up to like the $750 price point. We got the carbon tubes in there and then carbon line technology. So the use of those things, as well as their Amphibio profile, uh, giving this a right left specific uh, build and profile, really are just technological advancements that keep that price ticking up. So all of a sudden you're getting uh, a really qual high quality ski, uh, well engineered for uh, you know under six hundred dollars. I think that that's that that's a winning formula for sure. Um, and we've always really liked how stable and responsive and fun the ski is for how light it is. It's so, so easy to ski. Yeah, you know when you're looking in the mid '90s, you just kind of get overwhelmed by skis that are too heavy. You know, that Mantra M6, sure. know, Enforcer 94, some of these skis that are just, you know, very powerful and, and very strong, but also they are quite taxing. And that couldn't be further from the truth here. You are losing out a little bit on that top end power, but you're just gaining like all day fun. Yeah. So how many times you get out there on a heavy ski and you're like, man, I'm just, I'm done. Yeah. You know, and Rip Sick 96 just takes that and say, all right, we're going to give you you know, 85% of the performance, but we're gonna give it to you over a longer duration. And that's really one of the benefits of something like this. And just super versatile. You know, mid 90s is a great place to be for having one ski for variety of conditions and terrain. Um, you know, you could certainly make an argument that these 88s have more room in lower snow areas, kind of like where we are in New England, but overall, you know, mid-90s is a great place to be because it handles everything reasonably well. Yeah, 100%. I thought what you said about 85% of the performance over a longer duration was, was very interesting and a, a, a unique way to kind of look at that. Um, I just wanted to point out that that 85% of performance is only true if you're achieving 100% of performance here <laughs> right. and there, yeah. which, like, you know, it's, it's funny, but it's also true. Yep. And like, there aren't really that many people. So you got to kind of think about like, do I need that 15%? Right. And for a lot of skiers, I would say the answer is no. Yeah. You know, you see a lot of people skidding underneath the lift on Kendo, Brahma, stuff like that. Those skiers would undoubtedly be better off on a ripstick. Yep. So just an interesting thought. Um, and then I was really glad I got to pick this one. I was a little bit hesitant to. This is the Enforcer 104 Free. Uh, the reason why I was hesitant to pick it is because it's still $679.99, Bob, which it is down from $850, but $675 or $680 still feels like a lot to be put in a bargain basement video. Yeah. But... I went with it anyways, and there is a specific reason why I went with it. Uh, Nordica has updated the Enforcer line for 2025. The free collection is now gone. So basically Enforcer and Enforcer Free have been combined into a singular grouping of skis. There is still an Enforcer 104. It is a great ski. There are probably more skiers who are going to like it, or people more people will like it more than this ski than people that like this ski more. I'm not explaining that well, but <laughs> I do think it's a better ski for more skiers than new version. But this is a 104 underfoot twin tip with two sheets of metal, which like kind of doesn't exist, or at least it doesn't exist very often. Yeah. So there's quite a lot of rise back here, quite a lot of splay. It really does have kind of like a rounded twin tip feel or vibe or 
performance, whatever you want to say. Um, and I just think that's wildly unique. And it is, I don't, there's, like, there's a certain skier out there. If you're like really aggressive, you ski really fast, but you still, you do it all with like a playful kind of freestyle mentality. This is like, it, it, I, it's really hard for me to stand here and think of a ski that's better than Enforcer 104 Free. It is just so good at going really fast and then also flicking the tail edge out. I know a lot of really, really good skiers who love it. That's their favorite ski. Yes. And that always kind of comes back to my mind where yeah. I'm like, oh, if these people think that thing is awesome, yep. then there's certainly something there. Yep. And like I did weird stuff with mine. I, I pushed the mount point forward yep. considerably. Um, I don't think that the new Enforcer 104 has that same capability. Sure, you could play around with the mount point, but I don't think you could go as centered as you could on this ski. Um, or if you did, it, it, it just wouldn't up, open up as much freestyle performance. So yeah, if you want like a free ride ski with metal that can go backwards, this is fantastic. Yeah. And the new changes just seem to be pointing people more to Unleashed 98 and 108. That's kind of the thing. Of yeah. And like, I remember in, in one Unleashed 98 video, I said something like, when they came out with this ski, I was like, that's what I've been asking for. That's what I've wanted all these years. And then they came out with Unleashed yeah. 98, and I was like, actually, that's like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's probably a little that's bit closer. better. Um, because that just opens up the possibilities of, of what you can do yeah. on it, particularly at slower speeds. And, you know, this like, Love speed, loves open terrain, loves soft snow. Yeah. But also can rip carves. It's pretty wild. Yeah, I really like the new 104. I mean, that thing's great too, but it's not, that thing. Well, didn't... you're the type of skier that, like, the new 104 is better yeah. for you yep. than this ski. And I love the new 104, but there's definitely a part of me that's, like, sad to see the, the twin tippier version go away. Yeah, I think that's okay to be sad. Yeah, it's fine. Jeff, I'm noticing that you have three skis on your list that are above $600. Just wanted to point that out. Oh, I know. My <laughs> list is like... <laughs> but are, you also have both that are under $400. There are wild so. uh, fluctuations in my prices. Yeah. Um, and I'm going to address that, Bob, <laughs> on my next ski. Thank you. Me, I like to keep it more in the middle. And if you kind of know me as a person, that fits in line with <laughs> my personality as well. But... Um, Vocal Blaze 94, $519.99 down from $649.99. Uh, and this is one of those skis that's just kind of a, kind of a sleeper. And, uh, you know, even though it's $520, there's still a whole lot of value here. Um, similar to what we talked about with the Ripstick 96, we're getting lightweight, high performance. So it's that combination of attributes that really sets these skis apart from their more dense counterparts. Yeah. Um, when you're bringing something like versatility into the equation, we're also talking about things like touring and backcountry skiing. And that's kind of where this these Blaze skis kind of started their marketing adventure through Vocal yeah. um, as being kind of that you know front side, back side type of option. And then people just started realizing that, hey, this Blaze 94 is actually a really whole lot of fun just to ride the lifts at the resort. And I'm one of those people. I really think that this is an engaging and rewarding ski with excellent energy. It does have metal underfoot that functions as like an actual plate of metal, uh, not just binding retention, but it is full width. Um, so there's that. And then we get the rubber and the tips and tails as well. So there's technology going on here uh, and gets Vocal's 3D radius, gets kind of that long, low rocker that we see in a lot of Vocal skis. So everything from soft snow uh, to energetic carving on groomers and bumps, you know, we talked about that bent 90 as being a great mogul option in trees. I think that this ski is right up there as well. So easy to turn. And we do get a little bit of that tail splay as well, just to help kind of move things along when things get tight and a little bit tricky. Yep. But <clears throat> overall, this is just one of those really well-rounded skis that does a whole lot of everything. And you know, I think we talked about it in one of our comparisons because this was next to the mantra uh, on the wall. I think we did it alphabetically. And I'm like, I would honestly rather ski that if you had to give me one that I had to ski all year, 
uh, this thing fits my style better than a mantra. And even at 225 pounds as a powerful skier, like on paper, maybe I should be on that mantra. Sure. But on snow, I just find a lot more usefulness with this Blaze 94. Yeah, I think a lot of people are in the same boat. Yeah. But really impressive ski. This one does get minor tweaks structurally for next year. Yep. Um, so yeah, this will... Got a pair right out there. Yeah. And I want to get... I, I, I liked it when we skied it. I want to do some more. But um, yeah, if you want this current build, uh, this, is, this is it. Um, <clears throat> yeah, thanks for calling me out on my high prices. Uh, my next ski goes back down to 359.96. So looking at the board here, Bob, you don't have any skis that are under $400. No. Nope. And I've got two. So up next is the K2 Mindbender 85. Uh, this ski gets overlooked by a ton of people. It's originally 449.95 down to 359.96 which is the same price as that Revolt 96 that I started with. Um, that Revolt 96 has a pretty specific skier in yeah. mind, you know, a pretty specific audience, pretty specific market. This Mindbender 85 is genuinely a really good choice for so many skiers. I want to say like 60 to 70% of the skiing population could just have a Mindbender 85 and they would have so much fun. Yep. Up at this up at Stowe today, I saw so many people on like ten to twenty year old skis that they should just go buy a Mindbender eighty five for three hundred and fifty nine dollars. Yeah, and they will have a way better time. So the wider Mindbenders typically kind of get all the attention. They have the technology, so we have the Mindbender TI line, we have the Mindbender C line, utilizing Titanol and Carbon respectively. The Mindbender eighty five is just an Aspen veneer wood core that's just built like a ski. Yeah. Like, Dictionary definition is, of ski. This is what yeah. a ski is, yeah. And like we've talked about it plenty of times before, but just a good wood core with a good shape can be really awesome. Like that can be all you need for, from a skiing perspective. Like it's really fun. Yep. So if you're, say, an intermediate skier or even a less aggressive advanced skier, or like a progressing beginner, maybe you're getting older and you don't find yourself skiing as fast anymore, there is absolutely no, nothing wrong with Mindbender 85. And I know that it can be challenging for skiers. I think most skiers are similar in the sense that it's not necessarily like ego driven, but like skiing in general is not cheap. So most participants have at least some disposable income. And I think it's really easy for skiers or just humans in general to look at prices and be like, well, this is better because it's more expensive. And that's all ability level dependent in skiing or like not even just ability level dependent. It's like the realities of what you're actually doing on snow. And a ski like the Mindbender 85, I, I genuinely think is such a good choice for a lot of skiers and we talk about this plenty with like the mid 80 category in yep. general like dean star m pro 85 like that ski pops into my mind as another one that like definitely gets overlooked because of the 90 and the 99 and stuff yep. like that but like realistically like that's kind of the performance that a lot of skiers need and there's probably people rolling their eyes at me again and that's fine but this is great there's just so many people that could buy it and like you see a lot of like kind of recreational style skiers on narrower system skis, which like unless you're on firm snow and like carving turns are typically like not that fun. It's not helping you in your no. progression or adventure or overall enjoyment yeah. of the day. Yeah. yeah. Where like a ski like the Mindbender 85 put a nice low stand height flat binding on it and you're going to have, in my opinion, a, a better time. Yeah. So. No, useful width range for the majority of skiers. Yeah. And oh. then I, I can't wait to get to the next ski, too, because <laughs> I can explain why that's up here. Um, I wanted an affordable twin tip on my wall, too, Jeff. So I got the poacher. Um, this one kind of follows, man, like, 
thing is all there. Yeah, so uh, it's this. It blows my mind like every time either similar. just skiing or holding on to this poacher, just like how sturdy this thing feels. You know, we kind of have these misconceptions of twin tips as being floppy noodles that are just good for buttering and park and stuff like that. And, and then we've got some great examples up here of why that's not always true. Right. And why a ski like this has actually like a deceptively wide range of user type. So we talk about Colby Stevenson winning, you know, whatever upper level everything. X Games, Olympic medals and yeah. in, in slope style events on this ski. And then you also have people that are just looking for uh, kind of a fun, adventurous all mountain ski that has a twin tip to it that is durable and has some some oomph to it. Uh, they're really going to enjoy this poacher as well. Uh, you just get a surprising amount of energy out of it. You know, they use that K2 triaxial braiding, you know, and just with the carbon stringers in here. So you do get the stiffness, you do get the stoutness out of all that fiberglass. Uh, and it's just a really, really rewarding ski. Uh, 479.96 down from 599.95. So this is my only sub $500 ski. Uh, and I think it's a heck of a deal. Um, one of the things that I like about it is that it's not terribly dramatic when it comes to display. It's a little bit lower profile and that just makes for a smoother kind of operation standpoint for when snow gets, you know, choppy and soft um, and really just motors right along uh, similar in the tail as well. So while you can be a world champion slope style skier on this exact ski, uh, you don't have to be. You can just cruise around the mountain and feel like you're totally at home. You know, there's nothing wrong with skiing a twin tip and not going in the park ever. I, I kind of would have liked cool. it more if you had said that you had to be a world champion slope style skier to buy it. Very one dimensional. <laughs> yeah. No, there's, I just think there's it, two I, people. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I just think it's really impressive that, that, that this ski exists for both a, a, a world champion and a regular person who's just cruising around the mountain. Yeah. No, and a lot of people like the poacher. Yeah. It also like works really well for, I don't know if you mentioned this or not, um, people that are really, really hard on their equipment. Very durable. Because the durability yep. is kind of like off the charts on the poacher. It does change for next yeah. year. Thank you. That does go away. Um, what's it called? Omen Team. Thank you. You're welcome. Yep. Uh, and then moving on here, I got the Atris as my sixth pick. Um, I know what you're thinking right now. This is the most expensive ski in this bargain basement video. Do you know what other superlative it has, Bob? Widest? Sure, yes. Okay. That, as soon as I said that, I was like, God, that's the wrong answer. But no, it's not. This is wider. My uh -huh. 106 is wider. Now, fine, right? I was thinking old Atris <laughs> to 108. So you're wrong. Okay. Uh, can Darn. You have a second chance. What superlative does this have? Most brightest? Biggest discount. Okay. <laughs> so you are, compared to full price, you are saving more money buying this Atris at a discounted price compared to any other ski on this wall. So it's down to $649.97. Uh, originally, it was $950. What else can it do, Jeff? Uh, a lot. Um, <laughs> great question. I wasn't really expecting that. Uh, you know, I find a lot of similarities between the Atris and that yeah. QSD 106 that you started with. I think we've had that conversation at least once or twice before. Um, the thing that I really like about the Atris is it does ski like a really good directional free ride ski, uh, just like that QSD 106. They share a lot of the same characteristics in terms of like overall stability combined with their maneuverability and their capability in soft snow. I think the Atris has just a touch of freestyle flair in its overall attitude and performance, which I personally really like. Yep. Um, I know that the last time we did a long review of this ski, I think I skied it in the park a couple times and did some park tricks just to like kind of show that it has that capability. It's definitely wide when you start to talk about park performance, but it just has that kind of personality to it of, of can rip like rip like straight down the fall line, steep demanding terrain. Uh, but then you can also like pop around and ski backwards and stuff like that. And 
super flickable for the trees here in Vermont, but then like tons of people love it out west. So it's yeah. a fantastic ski. Um, Black Crows, like as a brand, I think they we have become accustomed to the fact that they carry a higher price tag. Yeah, well, I think that it, it also shows that kind of more thought and design go into the skis. Like yeah, they're really lot. well designed skis. They are, yeah. And like, I think you could look at internals and start to question the price. Mm -hmm. Like, well, there's not two sheets of metal in here, so like, why is it more expensive than an Enforcer 104 yeah. and stuff like that? But yeah, again, I think like from the development side and they're like, we've talked about this before, but like every ski that Black Crows makes feels like it has its own personality right. rather than like, here's the same ski in seven different widths. Yeah. So. No, and your percentage point is right on because you're basically getting that for $50 more than a QST 106. So the, Correct. Those... When, when original prices were $200 apart. Yeah. So that's why I picked it. So again, I, I win because <laughs> I, have, I have the two least expensive skis. Actually, I think I have three that are cheaper than any of yours. Yes, yeah, I, yes I do. I have three, the three cheapest skis on this wall plus the one with the biggest amount of savings. Wow. Great work. <laughs> I have, for my last pick, an Armada ARV100. Um, which does get a slight core change for 2025. Um, I still think that this thing has an uncommon amount of energy and rebound for being a 100 millimeter twin tip. Yeah. Uh, this is another one of those skis that you're thinking, uh, there's no way that this thing should perform as well as it does. And while it's not on the level of something like an Unleashed 98 in terms of smoothness and power, it is most certainly lighter, more mobile, and more manageable. So there are a lot of pluses to going a little bit lighter, a little yeah. bit more flexible, but still with that excellent rebound. Uh, Price-wise, this is $559.96, down from just under $700. So for less than $600, you're getting 100 millimeter twin tip ski, does have that wedge wall technology in here as well. So that is making these sidewalls more durable uh, and just incorporating the sidewall material into the core. So there is that technology here as well. Um, that lighter weight Karuba wood that they're using uh, is being swapped out for poplar for next year. Yep. Um, but you can still really get a lot of rewarding turning on this. Um, you know, Megan skis this, the ARW 100, yeah, and loves, loves it. it. Yep. And, you know, as a former Noram racer, the fact that she's able to make uh, the type of carved turns that she makes on these, and, you know, even someone bigger like me, I do find a good amount of stability here as well. Uh, but I really like this thing for its mobility, first and foremost, and just that twin tip style. So if you're looking for that, you know, unleashed poacher, Revolt, but in that lighter and more mobile, kind of even a little bit more park oriented, just slightly wider. I think that this is still a, a phenomenal choice. And, you know, also on that list of skis that aren't suddenly bad because they Correct. changed some wood. Yeah, and I've, I've seen some discussions on the internet about the changes of ARV, ARW. Um, like I, I skied that. I have an ARW 100 mounted up for myself, yeah. and I've like, I've skied that thing hard right. and like beat it up pretty significantly, and it's it's still doing just fine. Yeah. So, they did change it. I think like talking to the kind of product manager for Armada, they just kind of preferred the the slight change to the feel that Poplar provided. Um, but yeah, I think they're they're just undeniably extremely fun to ski as yeah. is. So. And they also made those changes with declivity. So it's not like yep. this no, they is... They just kind of did a wholesale change yeah. of like, everything gets poplar now. Yep. And that's actually exactly what they did. Right. Where just basically like every ski gets poplar. Yeah. Um, so the last ski we have up here, this was my final pick. This is the Ranger 102. It's amazing to think about like the first time that we skied this new version of Ranger 102, kind of thinking back to when the pink ski went away and this ski took over, it feels, I think it was like three years ago. 
been a while. It's been a while. So what that means is this ski has been kind of just sitting on the marketplace at full price for like basically that same duration, a really long time. Yeah. Um, and eight hundred and fifty dollars is is not cheap for a ski. So I think like. Not surprisingly, Ranger 102 sales, at least it seems like, have slowed down a little bit. And like, I think probably everyone that really, really wanted one got one yeah. and spent 850. Now they're down to 637.49. That's like a completely different price for this ski. This is a lot of ski and a lot of versatility in a single ski. Yeah. You can ski it on firm snow, it does just fine. You can take it out west and ski a powder day. I recently talked to somebody, a friend of a friend, who was looking for a ski to ski here on the east, but also take out west. They opted for this. They have since done both of those things. They've skied it here on the east, and they had a very successful powder trip out west, and they were just over the moon with excitement about Ranger 102. So it is awesome. Um, I like. I've developed a lot of fondness for this ski, and interestingly, in the 176, which is a typically for me like actually like 10 centimeters shorter than I would normally go in like a free ride ski, but I just found it like incredibly agile in this length here in Stowe, and then I still get like enough enough power from this shaped TI laminate underfoot, um, and then this is a, another one that doesn't change structurally for next season, so. They basically just made it purple. Um, purple is my favorite color, Bob, but interestingly, I kind of prefer this teal. I just really like how bright they are. I think it's a very aesthetically pleasing color. So as superficial as that may be, one of the reasons why I picked this as my last pick is because I personally would rather own it in teal than purple. What about the dark blue? Is that going away? I can't remember. There's a, there's a muted, more yeah. conservative color that I looked at and then completely forgot about because the purple was more exciting. Yeah. <laughs> Funny how that works. Apologies to Fisher. <laughs> um, but I don't know, a fun one to end on <clears throat> and not the least expensive ski in the world at $637.49, but I do think there's a lot of value there and you're getting what will likely still be a current ski for not just next year, but more years to come. It's just amazing to think for how long this has been on the market, how that this is the first time that we've seen Yes. The price drop on it. Correct. Yes. So that's it. Um, let us know if you have any questions about any of these skis. Uh, if you're looking for like more in-depth information or maybe more skiing footage or something like that, we have ski test videos on all these skis. We have full review videos on most of them. Definitely most of these skis. They've all been featured in uh, various ski tests over the years, depending on how long this version has existed. Um, so you should be able to find all of those things. If you can't and you're looking for something specific, just leave it in a comment and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. Yeah, sounds good. That was fun. I'm glad that my side will receive all the winning votes. With time will tell. <laughs> yeah. All right, so let us know what you think. Let us know if you have any questions and we will talk to you soon. Bye.